What is up you guys, Dennis Garcia here. How the hell is everybody doing? So for this week's video, I wanted to do something a little bit different and something that I have not done in quite some time. When I first began this YouTube channel back in 2017, I wasn't really sure where I wanted to take this channel. I didn't know if I wanted to do vlogs, unboxing videos, if I wanted to be a mukbang channel. I was still trying to find my place in the YouTube world. And what better way to make content for your channel and for the audience and subscribers to get to know you than to make story time videos. So a lot of my early videos back in 2017 and 2018 were a lot of story time videos of my life, my relationships, my sexual experiences. So I figured we would take it back and tell you guys a story that I've never quite told only because as I had my YouTube channel, I was living it and I kind of kept you guys updated from time to time during that whole situation, but I've never really sat down and told the entire story of my last real relationship that happened back in 2019. So today I figured what better way to make some fun, entertaining content for you than to bring back a story time and a story time that just happened a year ago. And we also have an update that I did not see coming. But as you can see by the title of this video, the title is, Yes, I Dated Someone That Had a Son. Let's talk about it. So this happened, I believe, in March of 2019. I had been single at that point for about two and a half years. And I wasn't really looking for a relationship. Yes, I was on Tinder and Bumble and all of the dating apps but I really wasn't looking for anything I was just like swiping on everybody and just trying to make friends fuck buddies whatever came from it and one day I matched with this guy he was the first one to message me we started talking and the conversation just like flowed he was super easy to talk to he actually conversated with me he enjoyed talking and getting to know me he asked questions about me as a person and that is one thing initially that I get impressed with whenever I talk to somebody on Tinder or on Bumble is if they're the type of person to engage in conversation with you and ask you questions about yourself, it gives you some brownie points. Cause a lot of the people that I've talked to on Tinder the last four years that I've been single, have been a bust. Most of the people that initially say hi to me won't keep the conversation going. And it makes me a little bit confused cause I'm the type of person that will talk to you and ask you about all of your favorite things, where have you traveled to, basic getting to know you questions. Most of the guys that I talk to will only answer the question and won't ask a question back. So the fact that this guy was trying to get to know me made me feel a lot better with wanting me to get to know him. If the effort is being put in, I'm the type of person that will put in the effort times two. And so we talked for like a day or two and then he was like, hey, so I'm gonna be in Phoenix tomorrow. Do you wanna like meet up, hang out for a couple hours and talk in person and have a coffee and, and just hang out? And I was like, you know what? I haven't met up with anybody to go on a date in years. So yeah. So the next day I get off work. I go to Dutch Bros. Of course, <laughs> I get us two of my favorite coffees. We meet up at the park and my initial first impression of him was, whoa, he's tall. He is 6'4", six, 6'5", six, big, tall dude, my type of guy, very muscly, very deep voice and just Job. what I assume to be a perfect specimen. The whole entire time that we're at the park, we are talking and just having a great time. I think he came initially like around five o'clock in the afternoon and the park closed at 10. So we were like, do you want to continue the date? Should we call it a night? What should we do? And he was interested in keeping the date going. And then around like 11 o'clock, we went to go watch, I think the Avengers. We stayed at the parking lot of the theater till like three in the morning, just talking. And so I was tired, he was tired. He had to drive back home all the way an hour and a half away. I had to drive back home. I was like, wow, this guy is perfect. And this guy is amazing. And I am so excited to get to know him. And throughout those couple of days, I got to know him and he told me that he had a kid. I think at that time his son was like three or four. I was kind of like shocked because I had never been with a guy who had a kid. 
And I think I was 27. Whenever you're young, you date guys and you don't expect them to have kids. But I mean, the older that you get, the more that you think and realize that we all have a past life and we've all had our lived our lives and some come with kids and some come with ex-husbands or ex-wives. So there's a lot in growing up that you don't really take into account when you're getting older that the people that you potentially meet and date have their own thing. So when he told me that he had a kid, I was immediately like, okay, if we were to fall in love and build a relationship, I would essentially be a stepdad. And we had a conversation about all this and he basically said like, I am not ready for you to like meet my son. If down the line we pass like a year, I would introduce you to him and we could start taking this more seriously. I was fine with it. I was like, let's take this slow. Let's just see where it goes. And I think at the time he was 29, 30, so like two years older than me. The first week that we were officially together, I met his parents and they were amazing. His mom, I love her. She's an artist. She had a quirky personality, like their family, welcomed me with open arms. And I was like, literally like, this is the perfect relationship. Throughout those three or four months, it was just like, it was amazing. I traveled to Austin, Texas with his mom for a two day trip for an art convention type of thing. And I actually have a little like mini like vlog about it that I posted on the channel. At first, it was a little bit awkward because it's everything seemed to be just going so fast. And I, I think this was around like April and I had only been with him for about a month and I was already traveling with his mom to go to Austin, Texas. And I'm the type of person that is like a really awkward person. Like I need like my security blanket. And a lot of the times that blanket was him. His parents were nothing short of amazing, but I am an awkward person. I'm a quiet person. I'm a very introverted person. So like the fact that he was not there with me and I was there with his mom for two days in Austin was scary for me. It was stepping out of my comfort zone and not having that security blanket. And then in May, I traveled to the East Coast for about 22 days. And I traveled to uh, New York, Boston. I traveled to Washington DC. I spent a week and a half in Baltimore and I was just out traveling throughout that whole entire time. You know, whenever you have time to like get away and think and really focus on the relationship and how fast everything seems to be going and you're kind of second guessing how much you truly care for this person on a I wanna be with this person level, I began to sort of have second thoughts and doubts about the relationship. On paper, everything was perfect. He was a gentleman. What I've always wanted in a relationship, you know, he was tall, his family loved me, I loved their family, and like, it was just a perfect situation. But when you're looking in deeper, we really didn't have that much in common. I'm the type of person that wants to talk about the Kardashians and Ariana Grande and pop culture and YouTube and Shane Dawson. And he was a type of guy who wanted to talk about politics, 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 and how much he despised Trump and about Hillary. And he was very politically well-spoken and he was very smart. He is very smart. That's just that at the time, that wasn't my thing. I had never been interested in politics. It's not something that I was trying to get into. And it just, it, it ended up not being a good match. Whenever we would talk and hang out, things got more awkward. They felt a little more dragged out. The relationship started to dwindle. We were going past that like, initial honeymoon phase, quote unquote. And around like June, I believe, I texted him and I was like, hey, I think we should take a break and break up because of what basically what I told you guys. Another reason why we were not compatible is because he considered himself like pansexual and he didn't really like to have sex. And I'm a very sexually driven person. I love to have sex. I think sex in a relationship is important. And for him, sex wasn't a priority in a relationship. And for me, it's it's not a priority. Like I don't need to have sex, but I think in the four months that we were together, we only had sex maybe 
once. And that's kind of unusual for me because I have a very high sex drive and when I like somebody or when I'm with somebody, I like to have sex. And he just wasn't interested. He, he, he preferred more intellectual conversation. That was like his sex. And so that was another reason why we were incompatible was not only that he was very smart, very well-spoken, very well into politics, but he also did not need sex to be in a relationship and I did. So we ended up breaking up. It was very, very amicable, very mature and one of the most adult breakups that we've had. We talked it out. We kind of were like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, if it's, if we're not compatible, we're not compatible. And you know, every fucking ex that you have will always say, let's be friends. Let's, let's continue to talk. Let's continue to have a friendship and never spoke again. Sometime around this year, around like March, I got those little Facebook memories where it was like, oh, this was you a year ago. And it was a picture of me and my ex. And so I was like, I wonder what he's been up to. And I find him on Facebook and now he's transgender and he is a she, she now. I should start saying it like it is. She transitioned and it, or is in the current stages of transitioning. And I'm very, very happy for her. Um, we haven't talked since we broke up in June of 2019. But from what I saw at the time, he was in, she was in a brand new relationship with a different person. And I believe she had moved um, to a different state with her, with her current partner. It's, it's the weirdest thing to like be an adult and be 29. Like right now I'm 29 years old and I still feel like I'm 18 years old. I still feel like I'm in my early twenties. Like whenever I see a guy and I'm like, Oh, he's cute. And then I'll be like, Oh my God, he's 33. And then I'll be like, Oh my God, I'm 29. That's only four years older than me. Like I'm at that point now where any guy that I date could potentially have a kid or an ex-wife or an ex-husband. That was my last relationship. I just really wanted to talk about this because I've never talked about it in full. I've never like sat down and like told you guys what happened even though I had been doing vlogs and videos during the whole process of that whole relationship. So if you go back to my channel between like March and June of 2019, I have a lot of like content that is about that new relationship and the breakup of the relationship and all of that stuff. So yeah, it, I, I'd say it was pretty interesting. It was a pretty interesting time in my life and now I'm single again and back on the Tinder grind. Uh, but yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I also tried a new little background and see how we like it. Um, I don't know how I feel about it yet. Once I start editing this video, we'll see if this is a background worth keeping. But aside from that, I hope that you guys enjoyed this week's video. It was a little fun to kind of go back to my roots of YouTube videos, which is story time videos. I might come out with a few more sometime during the next couple of weeks. I gotta go back in my brain and like roll through all the shit I've been through and think, is this story time worthy? We'll see. Aside from that, I hope that you guys are all having a good day and a good week and a good month and a good year and a good life and I will see you guys on the next one.